So this time we're going to talk about um, uh, you know, a really cool thing, which is how to get the surface area, so the surface area, the surface area of an object of a group. So um, you know, this is the same thing that we've been doing all along, right? There's only one um, one idea in calculus. That is, you um, uh, if you're asked to do something complicated, refuse to do it, and try to do something simple, right? Try to do something simple, and then take the limit of that simple thing. Okay. So um, the the picture that we have is like this, right? Somebody says, I'd like you to take this take this uh, <coughs> the graph of some function, and I want you to rotate it around an axis. Okay. So rotate that thing. Uh, around an axis, and um, so you get you get some sort of surface, right? And I'd like you to figure out the surface area of that of that object. Figure out the surface area of that object, right? Now that seems pretty pretty hard, right? Um, uh, but as usual, you say, well, um, I'm 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 not going to do that. Um, you know, your, your requests are always unreasonable. I'm, I'm going to do um, something simpler than that. I'm going to take my object and approximate it with lines, as usual. Okay. And I'm going to rotate those lines around the, the axis that you gave me. I'm going to rotate that, those lines around. <coughs> right. And I'm going to get something like this.
is pi r minus one. Right? Just the surface area of the big guy minus the surface area of the little guy. So um, now there's actually a relation between the um, between these uh, these ratios. Uh, I'm sorry, between these lengths, right? Because here we, you know, these aren't just any cones. These are part of the same cone, right? These cones are part of one cone, right? So you've got similar triangles here, right? So you see that um, uh, the ratio R1 to L1 is the same thing as R2 to L2. We'll use this observation to simplify uh, ex our expression for the for the for the surface area. Okay. So say, okay. Well, this tells us that R1 L2 is equal to R2 L1. Right. So um, <coughs> I'm going to take my surface area formula. Um, surface area is pi. R2 L2 minus R1 L1, and I'm going to rewrite it. Um, as usual, I'm going to do something strange. Uh, I'm going to add on R1 L2, and I'm going to subtract off R1 L2. So I throw in a zero. It's always okay to add zero. Just like it's always okay to multiply by one, it's always okay to add zero. Okay. Now you may be wondering why I do that. Don't worry, it'll become clear in a second. Okay. At this point, I'm going to use my, my observation. Let me call this thing star. Okay, so I'm going to use star and say, well, look, that gives me R2, L2, uh, plus R2 L1 minus R1 L2 minus R1 L1. Okay. We haven't done anything other than just some arithmetic, so I'm going to assume that everyone's all right. Um, at this point, we say, okay, now let's um, factor out an R2 from the first two terms. We get R2 times L2 plus L1. We factor out an R1 from the second two terms. We get R1 times uh, uh, negative L2 minus L1, right? So. I'm 
I'm sorry, I, I must have made some mistake here. Yeah. So, um, well, yes. I may be mistaken, but the same line is there. Since R102 are equal to R201, you should, instead of R102 minus R102, you can substitute the two. You see the second line underneath when you, you add it and subtract it, right there. Yeah. When yeah. you add it and subtract it, mm -hmm. rather than R102 minus R102, you could put R102 minus R201 because they're equal. See, as per, unless I'm just stuck. It's saying R102 minus R201. Yeah, because they're equal. So you add a zero in essence. Yeah. Okay. See, now you can, now okay. you can be factor, I think. Uh, no, that's good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. That's <coughs> okay, yeah, that'll do. I think that'll do it. Um, so we got uh, R2 times L2 minus L1. What else do you get? R1 times L2 minus L1. Right? So we get um, R2 plus L1 times L2 minus L1. to add in a zero here, but it wasn't the zero that I thought it was. It was a different zero. Yes? On the bottom line, is it R2 plus, is, does it say now R1 plus R1? It says, oops, it should be R2 plus R1, right? By you, you distribute out, right? So you get R2 plus R1, sorry, times L2 minus R1. Okay, which I'm going to write as um, 2 pi r1 plus r2 over 2 times uh, l2 minus l1. So I just multiply it by 2 and divide it by 2. <coughs> Fine. Good. So you see what this is? This thing is um, 2 pi times the average radius. 2 pi times the average radius times this um, times this slanted height. Okay. This thing here is L2 minus L1. Right. <coughs> so the surface area of the frustum um, turns out to be the uh, surface the same as the surface area of a of a of a, of a cylinder with the average radius. Right. If you take a cylinder of the average radius, you take you know, R1 and R2, right, this, was, this thing here would be the average radius, and you basically take this line and you tilt it straight and make a cylinder like that, that's the, that's the surface area of the first one. So um, it is the same thing as the surface area of some sort of uh, cylinder of the average radius.
suppose you look at the xk minus 1, xk piece here, right? What would be, write down the, write down the formula for the surface area of that crystal. So this thing is going to be some sort of average, average radius, right? You, you'll see why when you when we. When <coughs> we know the length of the sidewalk. What's that? Are you not supposed to average the sidewalk? No, no. I mean, I mean, you could, but you, you'll see why we, this, we want to do it this way. Yes. So you would do like 
the square root of yes. x k minus or yeah x k minus x minus one squared plus um f of x exactly. k minus exactly. one squared. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Exactly. Great. Actually, I'll give you one of the points. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So you need this. You need this this length here, right? Or you just use the distance formula, right? Use the distance formula. It's going to be this this point here is x sub k minus one, f of x sub k minus one. This point here is x sub k, f of x sub k. Right. So use the distance formula on it. You get x of k minus x of k minus one squared plus f of x of k minus f of k minus one squared. Okay. So that is the uh, that is the area of the kth uh, the kth frustum, the surface area of the kth frustum. Right? And you add them all from k equals one to, from k equals one to n. Okay. And that would be your your approximate answer. Right? That would be your approximate answer. And then as usual, you say, okay, let n go to infinity. Let Well, you know, if you've got points um, uh, x1, y1, and x2, y2, right? what's the distance between them? What's the distance between them? Right? There's something called the distance formula, saying that you get x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2. Y1 minus y2 squared. Yeah, and then the graph for like flipping it over the x-axis. And that's how you see like the radius. Yeah, yeah. So we're taking this thing and we're spinning it on the <laughs> x-axis, right? And so you've got um, one radius here, right? And you've got another. You've got the bigger radius here, right? Just like in our picture, we have this. We have this sort of thing. We had a smaller radius and we had a bigger radius. I just turned it sideways. Okay. Other other questions? Other questions? Okay, so we let n go to infinity, but before we do that, we play the trick that we did before. Right? We're going to multiply by, we're going to let delta x be um, the distance between subsequent points. Right? So let delta x be b minus a over n. Right? And we're going to slide that into here. Right? This is going to be delta x squared. We slide in a delta x squared here. Right, so multiply, again, we multiply by 1. Okay. So this delta x is, of course, uh, xk minus xk minus 1. Right, the distance between subsequent points. Okay. <coughs> then as n goes to infinity, we uh, we notice that this thing is a Riemann sum for the integral from a to b of 2 pi, well, what's going to happen to this thing? f of x, as n goes to infinity, f, sub, f of x sub k plus f, you, know, you take the averages of these guys over 2, right? And we let the points get arbitrarily close to each other. What's going to happen to them in the end? You get basically f of x plus f of x over 2, right? So that will be f of x, right? And then this thing, we've seen this before, right? This is 1, right? We get 1 squared plus this guy we saw before. Remember remember what it turns into? The, this, it is the slope, and then in the limit, it turns into the, the derivative, right? So we get the square root of 1 plus f prime squared. And that's the formula for the surface area. Okay. Yes, Karen. Why isn't the f of x over 2 
because we have two f of x's over two, right? We, have, we end up with f of x plus f of x over two. So it becomes one f of x. <coughs> okay. okay. Um, so that's that's what we have. That is uh, that's the surface area. I should write this out. Okay. If this is the surface area of surface area of the graph of uh, f of x, graph of f of x uh, rotated around the x-axis, rotated around the x-axis. This, this term here, really what it is, is the distance to the axis, right? Distance to the axis. So if we change the axis, like if we drop the axis to y equals negative 1, then we have to have like 1 plus f of x, right? If we drop, if we, if we rotate it around some lower axis, well, we'd have to take from, 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 from the graph to that axis. <coughs> the distance to the axis. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay. um, just one remark. Uh, if you do it the opposite way <coughs> for the graph of some function of y around the, um, around the y-axis, you get you know, the corresponding formula. Right? It would be um, two, uh, two pi uh, g of y square root of one plus g prime y square root of one. So you just have something. You just have the analogous formula. Does that make sense? Anybody, anybody have anything they're not clear about? Anybody confused? Okay. Well, let's do let's do an example or two. Let's do a few examples. Uh, okay. So here's a simple one. Um, let's look at uh, f of x equals one minus x squared. And we do that over as x goes from 0 to 1. And rotate it around the, um, the x-axis. The, the formula. I, you don't have to evaluate it. Just write down, write down the equation.
Okay, Tim, is somebody nearby and talk to them, please?
So what do you get? Somebody just tell me. The integral from zero, zero to one of two pi sine pi x, right? Just say one. I'm going to say something that's a little bit peculiar. Okay. Um, uh, so this thing here, remember, this is the distance to the to the axis of rotation, right? This thing here basically represents the. Um, this thing here is the uh, uh, this. This is the yeah. This is the arc length, right? Um, arc length of that little piece, right? So you you're taking a guy and you're saying, okay, I'm, I've got this, I've got this. I'm going to be rotating this thing around. I've got this little little arc length that I'm rotating around that axis, right? Okay, so that's that's what that's what this thing uh, represents. Um, uh, Coming back to this 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 first problem, um, one one two four. Right, so you've got one one two four y equals x squared. Right. I could actually do this um, with respect to the x-axis uh, as. I could do this. I could actually do this. We we did this with respect to the y, um, y axis. But you could also do the integral with respect to the x axis. So you'd say, well, look, this is going to be, um, right? Uh, I'm going to let my x go from uh, from one to two. Let my x go from one to two, and then. Um, if I'm thinking in terms of if I'm thinking in terms of x, what's my radius? Well, my radius is just going to be it'll just be x, right? right? My radius will be my x value. Well, my x value is <coughs> x. Okay, so I just call it x, right? And then I want um, uh, one plus the um, uh, 1 plus f prime x squared dx, right? Where my f, thinking of this as a graph, uh, in graph of x, my f is just x squared, right? So I could calculate the surface area along the x-axis. So I, you, you end up with 1 plus, you know, 2x squared dx. Okay. okay. And it turns out that, you know, if you evaluate these two, these two formulas, you're going to get the same thing. Okay. So, um, uh, one is done in y and one is done in x, but the idea is the same. Right, you're taking two pi times the radius times the arc length of that little piece. Right, it's just that um, you know if you're doing it in y, you know the radius is, looks like this. You're doing it in x, the radius looks like this. If you're doing it in y, the arc length piece looks like this. The arc length piece looks like this in x. Okay, so um, yeah, it, you can actually do it. Um, you can actually do it with respect to either axis. Uh, with that, with respect to either variable. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, let's 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 start here. Um, <coughs>